Over the hundreds of years of watchmaking that translates to modern wristwatches, very little has changed. A lot of people ask me about the gear trains in watches and how much is new in a modern wristwatch. And really, as a watchmaker making mechanical watches, there's very little that's new. It's all about using historic techniques and other watchmakers' inventions. This is all kind of obsolete technology. So every new watch that comes out, it doesn't have a new gear train or some wildly new idea inside of it. These are inventions from past watchmakers and they're perfect already. They have the right ratio and everything has been figured out. So as long as we stick to their invention and stick to their ideas, and we do it with our own artistic uh, interpretation, we can create something pretty special. A well-made and designed gear train will transfer energy from the mainspring to the balance wheel in the most efficient manner. We don't want to see energy loss to friction or any kind of additional wear to the teeth of wheels because we have too much friction in the system. In the gear train, of a watch, we're just trying to transfer power from a spring through the gear train into the escapement. So you have wheels like these that help transfer the power. The wheel is the brass part. It could be a different material, but in this case it's brass. And the pinion is the axle of that wheel. The wheel has many teeth. The pinion has just a few leaves. You should have one tooth profile for the wheels, and then you'll have a different tooth profile or profile for the pinion leaves. So a wheel interacts with a pinion that is the axle of the wheel. Going from the mainspring where the energy is stored in a wristwatch, through the gear train, you have your mainspring barrel, center wheel, then you'll have the third wheel, fourth wheel, and escape wheel. The escape wheel is the funny looking wheel that almost looks like it has feet or a boot on every tooth. That tooth shape allows for a few different things to take place. What we want is a tooth profile that will be able to lock and release on the pallet fork. The escape wheel is the beginning of the escapement and that's where you'll have some sort of tick-tock noises taking place. That TikTok is created from the balance wheel going back and forth. And the balance wheel is the equivalent of a pendulum that fits inside of a wristwatch or a pocket watch. I have here in front of me today a more mass produced gear train that is very simple. And then I also have another gear train here that is a gear train that meets the Geneva seal standard. The Geneva seal standard is a higher level of finishing. There are certain requirements, 
certain surfaces that have to be polished in a certain way. And on a Geneva seal watch, you'll see the difference in the quality level of that part. And it should also make the part last longer. The Geneva seal can only be obtained if the finishing is done in Geneva. So those parts were finished in Geneva. The wheel portion of a Geneva seal watch will be plated in gold. There will be a polished sink around where the pinion rests in the wheel. This actually creates a really beautiful mirror image reflecting the highly polished leaves of the pinion that are above this sink. So it makes the wheel almost appear uh, more complex because there are more polished facets and more reflections appearing in the center of the wheel. As the teeth rub together in a watch over the years, you're gonna have some sort of metal flaking off. If the teeth of the brass wheel were gold plated, you're gonna see gold plating coming off of those teeth as they wear. So on a gold plated wheel, we have to put the wheel back on to another machine that only polishes just the teeth and removes the gold plating from just the teeth. The top of the wheel and the bottom of the wheel will still have the beautiful gold plating and the protective gold plating, but the teeth will not have it so that it won't flake off into the movement. On the mainspring barrel, you have a spring inside of a barrel. The barrel has teeth on the outside and in the center attached to the center of the spring, you have the mainspring arbor or the barrel arbor. That arbor is locked in place after the watch is wound. So the arbor does not spin as time goes on. The arbor spins when we wind the watch and then the barrel on the outside slowly turns as the gear train allows it through the oscillating and the release of time. So the barrel will spin after the mainspring has been wound. The barrel itself is at one side of the gear train and that's where we store the energy, either by manually winding up your watch by turning the crown, we're actually coiling a mainspring that mainspring will store the power necessary to power your watch, usually for about two days. The gear train will transfer that energy through the center wheel, the third wheel, the fourth wheel, into the escape wheel, and then the pallet fork and escape wheel paired with an oscillator, usually a balance wheel, in the case of a wristwatch, the oscillator needs to oscillate at a set known frequency. As long as we know that frequency, we can make sure that our gear train has the correct ratio so that we can actually transfer the turns of those wheels to the hands of the watch. Because the whole goal is to make sure that we can actually tell time. It's not just for the power to release from the mainspring. We want to make sure that we can transfer that to the hands of the watch and we can get the minute hand to go once around the dial every hour, the hour hand to go once around our 12 hour dial every 12 hours or twice a day. And if we have a second hand, we want that to go around once a minute. A traditional rate for the oscillator or the balance wheel is 18,000 beats per hour. That's a traditional frequency. So we know that set frequency and we can then design a gear train ratio around that number. From there, we can add any number of complications by using that gear train and adding to it, manipulating it, and we can tell many other things 
calendar mechanisms. We can have add stopwatches, chronographs. We can add moon phases, second time zones. Really anything we could dream up, we could add, as long as it has a base that has something to do with time and our calendar. We have inventions from other watchmakers who came before us. And this is one of the things that I think is so cool about mechanical wristwatches. We get to use these inventions and add our own artistic twist to them, but it's still using old technology and doing things the old way. There are far more accurate ways to tell time, but doing it with a mechanical watch, there's something more to it. The romance, the art, the keeping alive of these trades. These are things you don't see when you pull out a cell phone to tell the time.